Hello, hello, hello. In this worked example, we're going to learn how to win at pool. Uh, the name of the game in pool is figuring out where the balls are going to go. So you have a cue ball and a, say the eight ball here, and you're trying to get the eight ball uh, in one pocket and avoid uh, the cue ball going in a pocket because that's called a scratch. And uh, we have two possible uh, shots here. Uh, if the cue ball is here, can you get the eight ball? What do you do to get the eight ball in the pocket without the cue ball uh, going into the corner? And what about this shot? Uh, one is a much better position to be in than the other. And uh, let's see if you can guess which it is. Uh, but if you can't guess, uh, you will know by the end of this worked example which shot you would rather take, this one or this one. So let's dig in. So the name of the game in, in pool is really to figure out where the balls are going to go. So, you know, typically you have a situation where uh, you have the target ball is at rest before the collision and you have some, uh, the cue ball is coming in. It has an initial momentum and uh, there's going to be a collision between the cue ball and the target ball. And the cue ball is going to go off one way and the target ball is going to go off the other way. And uh, we know um, that uh, by definition in a collision, the momentum of the system doesn't change, right? Because we're treating the system here, system of the two balls as an isolated system. And uh, not only that, but um, we're going to assume that this is an elastic collision. And by definition of an elastic collision, the total kinetic energy of the system will not change. So those are going to be the governing principles that are going to uh, be in play here. And we're going to try to uh, use what we know about uh, conservation of momentum and, momentum and energy and also what we know about uh, Newton's second law to predict which direction the balls are going to go off in. And uh, anybody who's played pool knows that the critical variable here is what we're going to call the impact parameter. That's how far off center the uh, cue ball strikes the target ball. So to see why that is, let's uh, zoom in a little bit on the situation. So this close up down here shows uh, the moment of impact when the cue ball is striking the target ball. And... Uh, because the target ball is initially at rest, it's very easy from this drawing to predict what direction the target ball is going to go off at, uh, because the uh, the force uh, between that the cue ball exerts on the target ball is going to be directed along this red line here. It's going to be normal uh, to the uh, to the surfaces. It's a kind of normal force, and that that uh, just from the geometry of, of of circles, you can see that that. Uh, that the way to get the direction is to just connect the centers of the two balls. Uh, so, uh, and you can see that as you adjust the, this impact parameter here, that's going to change the angle here. And that's really what you're going to adjust uh, when you're trying to figure out what direction the target ball goes off. In. And that's an important consideration because you're trying to get the target ball in the pocket. But if you're trying to avoid scratching, you also want to know what direction the cue ball goes off in. And that's a little bit harder to predict because, you know, if something's at rest, then you know it's going to go off in the direction of the force that's exerted on it. But the cue ball has some initial momentum. It's going to feel a force that points um, along this line of contact here. So it's going to be deflected upward. But exactly what angle it's going to go at, well, to figure that out, we're going to have to uh, use a little bit of physics, and in particular, we're going to have to look at the conservation of energy and kinetic energy that are in play here. And uh, I've covered up my my conservation of kinetic energy, but but there it is. Both of these are going to be important in figuring out what direction the cue ball goes off at. Okay, so to do this analysis, uh, let's uh, set up uh, a, a set of coordinate axes and uh, Let's, we're going to define um, the top part of this drawing is the initial state before the collision, and the bottom drawing is the final state after the collision. And we see, again, the target ball is initially at rest. 
the cue ball comes in, uh, there's some uh, impact parameter. In this case, um, the cue ball is, uh, it's not quite drawn accurately here, uh, but the, the impact parameter is gonna, is, should be drawn such that the cue ball is hitting above the center of the, uh, of the target ball, and that's gonna make the target ball deflect down and to the right, and the cue ball is going to uh, deflect up and to the right. And uh, we want to know exactly what angle the cue ball goes off at. And so, uh, again, what we're governed by is, first of all, conservation of momentum. So let's see what that implies. So we can write conservation of momentum um, uh, sort of out, uh, mathematically as an equation uh, with the following statement. You know, the momentum is conserved means initially the momentum all lies in uh, number one, that's the cue ball. And then in the final state, there's momentum in both the uh, cue ball and the target ball. But when you add the vectors on the right hand side together, you got to get the same vector as on the left hand side. And that's what's shown graphically here. If you add the two final state vectors together, you get the sum adds up to the uh, momentum of the initial state. And uh, if we're interested in describing the angle that things go off at, uh, those angles are defined in this drawing here. So theta is defined as the angle that the cue ball goes off with, with respect to its initial direction. And uh, that's what's shown here. And phi is the angle between the direction of the cue ball and the direction of the target ball. So the cue ball uh, in the final state is heading off in this direction, and the target ball is heading off at an angle phi relative to the cue ball. Okay, so, so far, all we've done is apply conservation of momentum to draw these figures. And now we're going to make use of the fact that we're assuming that the collision is elastic. So if we assume that it's an elastic collision, by definition, we mean that the total kinetic energy uh, in the initial state is equal to the total kinetic energy in the final state. Kinetic energy is conserved. So uh, since the masses are all the same mass, the cue ball and uh, the, uh, the target ball have the same mass, uh, conservation of kinetic energy implies that each term uh, is a one half m where it's the same m in each term and so you have uh, we can basically get rid of uh, these factors of one half m in this equation and we have that conservation that the fact that it's an elastic collision tells you that v1 i squared the speed of the cue ball initially squared is equal to the sum of the square uh, of the squares of the final speed of the cue ball and the final speed of the target ball. And this relationship here, and especially when you look at this triangle here, uh, should remind you of something. This looks an awful lot like a familiar theorem. V1 squared, uh, that's the, well, if you ignore the M's here, uh, that's related to the length of what looks like a hypotenuse of a triangle, and uh, V1, uh, f squared plus v2 f squared uh, looks an awful like the sum of the squares of the two opposing sides of the triangle. So all that goes to say is that this requirement here, which looks like the Pythagorean theorem, is equivalent uh, to demanding that this be a right triangle. Uh, because the Pythagorean theorem, of course, only is true uh, uh, for right triangles. So what we've concluded, therefore, and if this this angle here is a right triangle, well, then clearly phi is also a right angle. This is a 90 degree angle. So what does that tell you? It tells you that for any collision between a cue ball and a target ball, uh, the angle between where the cue ball goes and where the target ball goes has always got to be 90 degrees. So phi must equal 90 degrees. So uh, that gets us back to our original question. We have two different pool shots on the table. This is the eight ball, and we're trying to get the eight ball in the corner pocket. 
And let's suppose you got to choose where you shoot from, which would be a better choice uh, of where to have the cue ball. Well, we know that if the eight ball is going to go off along the dotted line, um, the cue ball is going to go off at right angles. So in this case, if you draw a right angle to here, it looks like you just missed the pocket. Whereas here, if you draw a right angle, it looks like the cue ball is actually going to go in this corner pocket. So choice number two looks like what I would call a scratch shot, which is not the one that you want to take. Because if you get the eight ball in uh, the left corner pocket, it means that the uh, cue ball is going to go in the right corner pocket. Now, all of that uh, I should amend by saying that really good pool players know how to put spin on the ball and uh, do all sorts of crazy things when they take advantage of spin. And that's a good segue for the next big topic in the course, which is rotations, uh, where we're going to talk about spinning objects a lot. So that's it for this worked example. Hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.